It's Wednesday. We have two official days to go, but but probably it will be a bit longer than, than Friday night, of course. So what will happen in the last two days? I think you can summarize that three topics need to be resolved. One is what kind of declaration will we get on loss and damages? Secondly, the financing. What can developed countries promise to developing countries? And thirdly, a debate on the decision, the roadmap to Paris and how concrete can we define the steps in between. And it is very clear the developing countries want something on loss and damage and finance. And if they get something like that, they are willing to discuss the steps they need to take to Paris. But if they don't get anything on loss and damage or financing, it's going to be very difficult to them to really subscribe to a process which then will uh, get them involved in the climate deal for towards 2015. So that is the play that's going to play. It's all very sensitive here. I mean, last week Japan lowered its ambitions. Australia is pl playing a very destructive role. So. That in and all together makes it very difficult. And then on top of that today happened something very strange, is that the COP presidency, the Polish Minister of Environment, Mr. Korolec, he was fired as a minister, causing a lot of fuss here. And they said now, now he's only a climate envoy. No one really knows what it means, but it, it is of course creating a lot of unclarity. And here the Polish presidency, in the best case you could say, they don't have any priority for this COP summit and therefore just fire the minister during the COP. In a negative way, you could say they are deliberately trying to delay the process and cause annoyance. I don't know what's going on there, but it's certainly not helping. So the final two days, hopefully we can change the mood around because otherwise it's going to be another very, very negative COP. But we have two days to go, so let's see where we will be in 48 hours.